Yeah. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Killing innocents. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. After the brutal murders of TV reporter Allison Parker and photographer Adam Ward in Virginia yesterday, the liberal press reacted in a predictable way, calling for stricter gun laws and more mental health monitoring. Sadly, there is no way any country can stop disturbed individuals from killing people. And because of America's history, there's no way total control of firearms will ever happen here. Americans have a right to bear arms in order to defend themselves, and that's not going to change. And because all of us have that constitutional right, criminals and maniacs will abuse it and destroy innocent human beings. It is worth noting that Chicago and Illinois have ultra-strict gun laws but cannot stop the gang violence that has brought shame to that city. But there's something else going on. And Senator Marco Rubio identified it last night, quote, what has happened to us as a society that we now devalue life to such a level? What has happened in our society that people have become so violent? That's the fundamental question we need to confront. What Rubio is spotlighting is the rise in nihilism and a decline in spiritual belief. A person practicing nihilism believes in nothing but his or her own desires. Those folks have no loyalties, no purpose outside of their own gratification. Nihilism is a close cousin to narcissism, where a person believes he or she is never wrong and lacks empathy for other human beings. In 40 years of covering the news, almost every killer I've reported on has been a nihilist. For example, I just finished writing about the would-be assassin John Hinckley in my book, Killing Reagan. At the time he shot President Reagan, Hinckley believed in nothing. There is no question that America is now turning away from spiritualism and embracing the culture of me, what I want. Since 2007, Americans describing themselves as Christian declined almost 8%, while those who believe in no religious doctrine have risen almost 7%. In many media precincts, religious folks are openly mocked, considered to be fanatics. That message is seeping in, especially to younger Americans. The killers in Colorado, Charleston, Connecticut, and now Virginia, all young men who had few restraints in their lives. If you do not believe in anything, anything goes. So the next time you hear a pundit saying gun control or stricter mental health monitoring or whatever else they come up with is going to stop the senseless murders of human beings, know you are being deceived. Only a society that insists all human life is valuable and a mass media that promotes the message of that will begin to see a turn away from violence. It's all about the philosophy of loving your neighbor, not the myth that centralized government can prevent barbaric behavior. It cannot. And that's a memo. Now for the top story tonight, reaction. Joining us now from Boston, Dr. Karen Ruskin, a psychotherapist. And from Newburyport, Massachusetts, Dr. Keith Ablo, a psychiatrist. Dr. Ablo, what say you? Uh, Bill, uh, I'll have to agree in general with you because the truth is that psychiatry itself has strayed away from its spiritual roots. The two things aren't entirely different. What are we doing with really good psychotherapy and even the use of medicines? We're restoring people to the best of themselves. But they also have to believe that there's a plan for them, that there's manifest destiny for them, that there's a higher thing to strive for. And once you love yourself, and one might say because God loves you too, you can love other people. If you can't do that, your empathy can be shattered so that as you say, anything goes. Because if you don't believe, you can't empathize because forgiveness is what's required of people and what prevents them from striking out. Okay. Now, Dr. Ruskin, the murderers that I referred to in Charleston, in Connecticut, in Colorado, and now in Virginia, they all have a common theme. All these young men basically wanted to check out, all right? They didn't believe that life was li worth living anymore. But the difference is many people do that and commit suicide. They wanted to take others with them. They wanted to kill other people. They knew they were all going to go or go to prison for life. All right, but they wanted to hurt other people. And that says to me they were nihilists. Am I wrong? I respectfully disagree with you, Bill, in this case. When it comes to homicide or suicide, the feelings of hopelessness and helplessness 
to a point where you want to either kill yourself or take others down. There are many, many cases of where people are spiritual and they kill others. Spirituality— Can you point to one? —or non-spirituality does not of, mean outside that of the you jihadists. are mentally healthy or not right, mentally— right. Outside of the jihadists, yeah. Dr. Ruskin. Who use their religion? Why do we religion. have to go outside of the jihadists? Why can't we say the jihadists can is a you great point, example of that? Can you point to one mass murderer recently in this country who had a religious-based philosophy? Can you point to one? If I had the opportunity to interview all of the mass murderers okay, and so find out really what was going on, then perhaps you I can't could point to any. We know these people analysis. up and down, Dr. I have Ruskin. not interviewed the, them. The but reportage. What I will tell you is that whether you're spiritual or not spiritual, there are mental illness either way. Being spiritual doesn't mean that you have mental illness or don't have mental Listen, illness. Listen, Dr. Ruskin, mental there are many times, the there issue, are many kinds. And that's what we need to be focusing on. All right, I want you to, to stop talking when I try to get in. All right? There are many kinds of mental illness, many. Most people who despair Agreed. and want to take their own lives do not kill other people. Every single murderer over 40 years that I have covered in these circumstances has been either atheistic, agnostic, no religious basis at all. Tonight on this program, I asked you a simple question. Can you point to one person that committed mass murder recently that had a religious background? You cannot, all right? There is a common Can thread in my opinion. Can I ask you the question opinion. if you asked them if they had mental okay. illness I, I, in I, their I'm history dealing with as facts well? Here. And they all I'm did. dealing with facts here, doctor. All right, over Likely to you, Dr. Avalon. they Ablo. all did. Yeah. The spiritualism falls apart in the face of the jihad. Okay, which is a perversion of Islam. We all know that. But over the years and centuries, religion has been used to justify murder, even in the Christian precincts. That has happened. But individuals in this country now, I believe, are tending away from spirituality and into the secular progressive. It's all about me. And then when you combine that with a me mental illness, you have what you had in Virginia yesterday. That's the equation. Yeah, and look, um, spirituality isn't what's unfolding with ISIS. They may claim religious uh, motivations, but they don't have a love of their fellow man. And what I'm saying is agreeing with you, Bill, that sure, mental illness can erode your capacity to find yourself, that part of you that was instilled in you by God. And great psychotherapy and even medicine sometimes can restore that. Partly what we're restoring is your spirituality. Why can't we admit that part of the healing that happens in great psychotherapy is spiritual okay, healing? Okay, because I'm the okay secular society in which we live does not want to admit that, does not promote that. And that's my final point, Dr. Ruskin, that if you have a society that does not value life, and surely we do not value it in America, you can just look at the Planned Parenthood controversy that we're covering now. When you have a society that promotes secularism, that mocks religion, this kind of stuff's going to grow. I'll give you the last word. I'm not against spirituality. I believe it's very therapeutic for many people. I certainly do not believe, though, that being spiritual directly means that you absolutely are mentally healthy and will not commit murder. All right, but it does provide restraints in almost every organized religion. Doctors, thank you. Next on The Rundown, some in the...